Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Mull, and uh, as you probably can guess from my accent, I'm uh, not from around here. Okay? Where am I from? What's your guess? Liverpool. Liverpool. <laughs> Liverpool. No, I'm not from Liverpool. <laughs> Man no, I'm not from Manchester. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're in, you're in the right country. Yeah? I'm, I'm, from, I'm from England originally, suburban London, yes. then the north of England, yeah. Actually, I, 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 I sometimes say I'm from this tiny little sort of English enclave in the mountains, you know, which was isolated from outside influences that we still talk the same. Oh, what happens here? Let's check it out here. All right, all right. That's it. There we go. Um, and I teach communications at Ohio University, although by training I am a historian. Uh, there, are, there aren't so many good jobs in history, or you have to be really brilliant, and I'm not really brilliant. Uh, my background, in fact, is as a journalist. I worked as a newspaper reporter, also worked in television news, I've done radio work and documentaries and all sorts of other stuff, okay? Um, and Today, we're going to talk about something called oral history, or spoken history. And this is a little different, just looking at your schedule from the kinds of history you've, um, you know, perhaps been discussing so far this week. You know, uh, a lot of that history comes out of books, okay? Nothing wrong with books. Books are fine things. Um, but oral history comes from interviews, interviews with people. And so we're going to begin by looking at the kind of history that you get when you do oral history, when you interview people, and we'll think a little bit, I hope you can think a little bit about how this is different from what you might find in the archives or what you might find from another source. Okay, let's see if we can uh, get this one going here. Okay. Slideshow, that looks like what we should do, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on here. <laughs> uh, let's see. How many is this one? Oops. Slideshow should just go. Hmm. Mm. All the way over. All the way over here? Yeah, the All the way, thank you. From the beginning says down. Down. Ah, from the beginning. From the beginning. <laughs> this is very intuitive, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Okay, do you like it so far? Good. All right, excellent. Good. Oh, that's the end of my presentation. Thanks very much. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, here we are. Um, okay. First question I want to ask you is, you know, a lot of people criticize the use of interviews in history. They say, oh, it's just people using their memory, you know, and they forget things or they, you know, just remember what they want. Is there a real difference between stuff that comes from memory, and some of the other sources that you've used. Think about it. Okay? Should we disregard interviews and memory simply because, you know, people may misremember, they may get it wrong? Or what about some of the other sources? What do you think? I saw half a hand there. Yes? Well, I think that um, it should not be discounted because when you read... Um written history, you're at the mercy of what somebody chose to put into the writing. Absolutely, okay. Yeah. What other sorts of records have you looked at this week? What types of documents? Like materials. Like materials. What, what sort of mat yeah. like, material items? Mm -hmm. Like chairs. Alright, okay. What, but what sort of written documents have you looked at? Books. Books, uh-huh. Grand grants, uh huh. Yeah. You looked at any government records? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay, fine. Okay, I guess what I want to argue here is that a lot of historical records you read are actually somebody's memory as well. Okay? 
I mean, it's well known, it's, we'll take government, let's take the minutes of a meeting, of government meeting. You know, there are many famous cases where people have read the minutes of the meeting and went, I was at that meeting and this didn't happen. Okay, a lot of things. Minutes of a meeting, a newspaper report, a lot of things are based on people's memory. But because it's written down, it's in print. You know, people go, oh, it must be reliable because there are words there. And I would argue, and I'd like you to think about the fact that a lot of stuff that we use as historical evidence is, <coughs> in fact, based on people's memory. What about somebody's diary? Yeah, what I did today. <laughs> I mean, or what I didn't do today. Or, or I'm going to write down what I, I, something I didn't do today, but, you know, I'd like other people to think I did it. You know, diaries letters, all sorts of things that historians routinely use as historical evidence are based on memory. And I think there's also an argument that a lot of these things, because they're written down, are more deliberate. Okay? So, you know, if I, I don't keep a diary, I used to many times, but I wrote it down, you know, I would think a little bit about how other people would read it and, you know, what they would think of me. Okay? And I'll put the good bits in, leave out the bad bits. Um, the same with a letter or emails that I write. Okay? The act of writing is pretty deliberate. Okay? However, the act of speaking is more spontaneous. If I ask you a question, you don't have time necessary to sort of think about quite how to formulate the response. You'll give me something more spontaneous. And that might in fact be a more genuine record than something written down. So think about how many of the things that you routinely use as historians that are written down that are already based on somebody's memory and, you know, and recognize that oral history interviews are in the same link. Uh, this is the other thing I, I say about it. Uh, you were talking about material culture, chairs. Okay, a lot of things that historians use I say they literally dig it up. You literally dig it up out of the ground. You know, we've got an archaeological dig. Oh, well, a pottery shard here. Or, uh, you know, an arrowhead. Very interesting. Um, a lot of stuff, you know, either comes out of the ground or somebody stumbles into somebody's attic and goes, oh, more Civil War papers. Jolly good. Um, now, so a lot of stuff is literally discovered. Think about the interview, though. That's different. Okay? Um, the interview doesn't exist until you do it. Okay? Now, so, I mean, there are interviews that have been done, but every interview is, you know, a distinctive historical document because, you know, if I am going to interview, what's your name? Moret. Right, okay. If I'm going to interview Moret, I mean, I haven't met Moret before. You know, we're going to create a unique historical document. I'm not sure how useful it will be to people, because I don't know Moret that well. But this has never happened before, an interchange between Moret and myself. So every time an interview takes place, <coughs> you're creating something new, a new historical document. So that's why this is different from you know, the stuff you find in the archives and the stuff you find in the government records office and, and all of that.